Hey everyone, it's Katie from Bobby Hair Studio and welcome back to another color correction video. And if this is your first color correction video, thank you for joining us today. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe for more of these. I haven't done a color correction in a long time. So this is my client, Tia. She's actually a stylist here. And we've actually done a color correction on her before and we've put it on YouTube. I'll be sure to link that in, uh, in this video here so you can go see the first part because she's had old Demi permanent in her hair. So these three bands that I'm pointing to is the first is her virgin regrowth. The second is that virgin hair that had been bleached in that first color correction. You could tell it's a lot lighter than that third band which had old Demi permanent color in. So it was way harder to lift than you'd think and uh, you should go check out that first color correction video if you can before you see this one just so you can see the full process and why we got to where we got to. Today's video is basically how I got from this over to this and uh, this is so much brighter and I'm so excited to show you guys the process so make sure to stick around. Also I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of my subscribers. I really really appreciate you. If you want to support us in another way uh, feel free to follow us on TikTok and Instagram as well. So now we're gonna get started. Basically I sectioned the hair into five sections and then each of these back sections was sectioned again into three and each of those three was done with a slightly different pattern. So what I'm starting with on the bottom is because Tia tends to have a lot of breakage in those little baby hairs because of all the heat styling putting her hair up is we're putting a low light on her hair in a large slice at the very beginning so that that piece is just going to be dimensional. We're not going to bleach it. We're going to try to keep it as healthy as possible and then right after that we do a slice of the lightener formula so that's going to be a highlight and what we're doing with this underneath piece is we're creating a ton of contrast and dimension so that when she curls her hair or you see those little pieces come forward they're very bold but because they're not up at the top you don't really see where they start and where they end they're just really contrasted and they give that nice effect where if you put too many little baby lights everything looks like it's all the same color this is a great way to prevent that is that underneath that's where you put all those big chunky foils so my pattern for the bottom section is only slices and i'm going low light highlight low light highlight all the way up until i reach that second section i should also discuss the formulas that i'm doing here really quickly uh, for my low light i'm doing schwarzkopf tbh and it's in a 7-12 and an 8-51 with 13 volume. I decided to use 13 volume for more of the coverage that I needed for this low light because I find that old previous highlights tend to spit out low lights. And I used a 7-12 because it has a lot of ash. She wants to be an ashy or bright blonde and an 8-51 for a little bit of balance. For my lightener formula, I actually did two formulas if you've been noticing that. One area for the virgin hair and then one for the lightened hair. And I'm just going to talk about that once I discuss what I'm doing here. For this area, I am doing more chunky foils and my low lights, what would be pulled out of my foil, usually my drop, is what I'm actually low lighting. I'm making it darker because we don't want any of this like orangey yellow color showing through at the end. So we're low lighting everything that we wouldn't put into a highlight essentially. So my stronger formula is the blue formula. That's Schwarzkopf uh, Blonde Me with seven and 20 volume mixed together to kind of make more of a 15 volume. And then at the ends, I'm putting Schwarzkopf Clay and seven mixed with 20 volume in there. And it's got quite a lot of developer in it to make it more creamy and to make it a little less powerful so that we just boost it up like a level, maybe two, nothing crazy. And so what this achieves by doing really chunky foils, even some slices in this middle area, is that you're creating a change over from the slices to more of those weaves that we're going to be doing up top. So you're going from slices to super chunky weaves, more to weaves. And some of the weaves up in the top are going to be on the thicker side, but not this thick because this is to give us that contrast, but also to give us a transition. When you have this amount of blonding and you also have a natural color that's pretty light, 
it's really hard to tell the contrast when you do little baby lights. And of course on the top we want baby lights because we want it to be soft. So underneath this is why I do really chunky foils so that we get that natural contrast. We get the shading, we get the, the difference in colors and it's just a really good way I find of getting all of that in there. You kind of get the best of both worlds. Now the bottom and middle rows are complete, so I'm going to connect them with this top area. This is where I'm going to be doing bricklaying and I'm going to be doing a smaller weave, but it's still more of a medium weave, I guess. This is not baby lights, this is not fine weaves, um, but it will look more finer and baby lit once it's all done because again, there's very low contrast. So I'm starting my bricklay by connecting the two sides that I've done. This means that I'm going to be taking my first section in the middle and I'm going to weave, split it in half, and the top half of the weave is going to be my highlight, the part with basically more of the hair in it, and the bottom half is going to be my low light. This is how I've been doing my highlights and low lights this whole time, by the way. I don't know if you guys have been noticing. Now we're gonna be going over how I section the front of the hair. Tia tends to part on the side, so I've given her three partings. The two blue clips that I've put in are the clips on either side of her parting, and then the clip on the other side is the one that's just going to be hidden underneath, but it still needs to be equal because it is the other side, and we want things to be symmetrical. Also, you're gonna see right now how I'm foiling is I'm actually foiling in a money piece while I'm putting in my horizontal foils without any extra steps. Pay attention to how my weave goes because you'll always notice a really large chunk at the very front which is almost an inch thick and that's going to be my face framing highlight while the rest of the weave beyond that towards the back are more of a medium weave. So that's how you get a face framing highlight while weaving horizontally. When a client of mine has a center parting, I find it easier to do more of a mohawk sectioning. And I decided today to do a horizontal section because of my client's side parting. This is going to be easier for me to make things more symmetrical and even so that we don't have different foil types on either side of the parting. I'm also starting with the side that she parts on that there's less hair on because what I want to do is I want to make sure that this side lifts all the way up because it's not going to be insulated very well because there's fewer foils on this side. When you have more foils, they conduct more heat and they get insulated better and then they just end up being a lot faster to process. So I am starting with this side so it has more time to process. So that's a quick little hint for you guys there is if you do any side parting, start with the side that they show off more when you're foiling and then do the other side. And then what I'm going to be doing is while I'm foiling up this side, I'm going to be pushing past my parting and I'm going to be foiling about an inch to two inches beyond that parting so that the whole parting gets foiled at the same time rather than foiling right up to the part on one side and then doing the other entire side and then finishing with that last parting because guess what that last piece is not going to process as fast as everything else it's going to be exposed to the colder air it's not going to be insulated and it's going to be the last foil put in so it's going to take forever for it to process so this is a fantastic trick, is always foil your parting when you're foiling your first side and then move on to your next side so that your parting gets as beautifully blonde as you want it to be. And if there's any pieces that aren't slightly as light, then at least they're hidden underneath and no one's ever gonna see them. And that's just what I'm doing here. I'm also making sure that around the parting I have a consistent foil pattern. I'm not really switching it up right now. I'm not doing some more chunky and some more light. I'm doing kind of everything a medium weave because I want to make sure that everything is similar and symmetrical on either side of the parting. Now that we've done the foiling, now it's time for our toner. So we've washed her out and now we're applying our root shadow. So today I am doing a vertical root shadow because I did a horizontal foil. I find this is the easiest way to give a nice blend. My root shadow formula is Schwarzkopf Vibrance 8-11 and 9-55 and 6 volume. And uh, this is where my wish is going to be, so stick around for the two stars and a wish because I feel like this is really important for you guys to know. And uh, again, vertical parting all the way up to the front where I have her money piece where I'm going to do a little bit less of the root shadow, but still enough. 
Then I'm going to be doing my blonde toner, which is Schwarzkopf Vibrance 9.5-21, a 9.1 and a 9.55 for balance. And that's all with a six volume. I'm putting it in everywhere and I'm kind of mushing it into the root shadow because of course there's low contrast between these two colors. So it's okay if you give them a little bit of smudging and blend. So then I'm going to let her process for up to 20 minutes and then wash her, blow dry her and style her. Now here comes the best part, two stars and a wish. Everybody's favorite self critiquing tool. If you haven't heard of two stars and a wish, this is what it is. It's a self critiquing technique I've used since my first year out of hair school. It's utilized in teaching every one of my new stylists and apprentices and I still use it on myself to this day. The rules are this is a positive environment. There's no I hated or I sucked at language. This is constructive criticism only. Two stars always, no less. One wish only, no more. This has to be said out loud or to a mentor discuss and to learn new techniques that will help improve your skills. And also, we don't just say what, we also say why and how to really analyze so that we can really grow. I have to say for my stars is I maintained the health of her hair by using the clay formula on her ends but we still ended up brightening her up a lot so I'm really happy with that. My second star is that I was able to fit in a really nice money piece around the face and I'm really happy with that without having to take any extra steps or any different kinds of foiling patterns. I just merged it into my regular foiling pattern. My wish is that for my root shadow formula that I wish that I put in a 7-4 in there as well just for a little bit more fill because I used two balancing colors rather than putting in a brown base or a beige base as well is it didn't cover as much as I wanted it to. But there it is. There's her end result. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining us today and please remember to like and subscribe and follow us for more content. Enjoy everybody. Have a great day.